Hey gang patriots, probably notice, got no beard. It's a funny story. I was in Kmart yesterday, and I was in the toaster aisle. I was looking for a new toaster, and this man comes up behind me, taps on my shoulder and says, Hey, Muhammad, what must you go to? I fucking shit myself, ran home, and shaved the fucker off. And this is Neil Erickson, a leading member of the far-right racist group the United Patriots Front, along with Blair Cottrell and Sherman Burgess. They claim they're just well-meaning patriots with legitimate concerns for plans to build a mosque in the rural Australian town of Bendigo. Well that and they're also terrified of Muslims. So Islam cannot help itself yet again. All three men immediately exploited the tragic killing of a 17-year veteran police force accountant outside a Sydney police station to promote their anti-mosque rally. We've seen a shooting in Parramatta. When all of a sudden, a young Muslim man, a young Islamist, after prayer, walks down from a mosque and shot two people and blows his head off. This is Islam. Well, that's cultural diversity. Our next rally, just one week away in Bendigo. What will Australia look like in 20 years if we don't keep fighting? Join us if you care about your country. That's not the worst of it. They even copied an ISIS style beheading in Bendigo as a promotional stunt. We're just going to give you a bit of a, a taste of our own religious culture. Carry on, brother. This is the same group that claimed they're offended by flag burning. I mean, how stupid can you get? Running around burning flags? These guys are batshit. Now their two main concerns are the size of the mosque and its funding source. So let's start with the size. In Bendigo, there are 36 Muslims living there. The Muslim population in Bendigo is so damn small. 36. And they're building a mosque to fit over 2,000 people? 2,000. 2,000 people. It's one of the biggest mosques in the Southern Hemisphere. Biggest mosque in the Southern Hemisphere. They are planning to make it the biggest mosque in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, the Bendigo Council has said repeatedly that the mosque capacity is 375, not 2,000. Mr. Cottrell counters that the surrounding rooms bring the total worshipping space to 2,000. That's like saying the MCG can hold twice as many people because of all of that room in the car park. There's a mosque in Jakarta that fits 120,000 people, which is more than the Bendigo Mosque. And Indonesia is so in the Southern Hemisphere. And there are about 300 Muslims in Bendigo, not 36. Although, it's understandable that not all of them answer the roll call when the UPF walks into town. It is not the political Islam. It's not the militant Islam. It's not the radical Islam, but Islam itself that is the problem. I know how strong you all are. I know how proud you all are. I can see it in your faces when you look at me. And I know from the feeling of this place that you are ready to fight. For the record, Bendigo's Muslim community is currently praying in a small room at a local university that only fits about 40 people, and they've been there since 1998. So that's the size of the mosque taken care of. What about the funding source? Mr. Cottrell is determined to prove that it's dodgy. The money came from a financing firm called Sandhurst Trustees. Sandhurst Trustees is a subsidiary and is wholly owned by Bendigo Bank is a custodian of Sharia Financing. You heard me correctly. Sharia Financing in Croydon. And so it looks as though the money is coming from Sanders Trustees. Then you go back an Australian type financial, financial group. But no, the money is actually coming from Sharia Financing in Croydon. And that's not all. And Mr. Cottrell dials up the fear, but he doesn't bother to explain what Sharia finance actually is. This is where you need a business journalist and not a personal trainer. Sharia finance isn't just a company in Croydon. It's an entire form of banking, also known as Sharia banking or Islamic finance. And this British guy gives a pretty good explanation of it. Islamic finance works differently to conventional banking and is regarded as ethical by those who use it. But how is it different, and why is it considered ethical? Unlike conventional finance, Islamic banks operate without interest or riba, which is forbidden in Islam. Instead, Islamic banks' activities are based on trade. 
They don't use risky, speculative practices but generate returns from relatively low-risk physical assets, such as property and metals. Using the principles of partnership and risk-reward sharing, relationships are built on trust, openness and respect. So when Mr Cottrell says that the mosque is being built with Sharia finance, that's what he's talking about. And by the way, it's Western finance, it's terrifying. Lehman Brothers has filed for bankruptcy. Remember the exotic US subprime mortgages that wrecked the global financial system and threw millions of people into unemployment? That's Western finance. And BT dubs, those derivatives, are illegal in Sharia finance. So we've got secret plans for a giant mosque funded by spooky Sharia dollars. According to the UPF, all of this adds up to a grand conspiracy between the federal government and the Bendigo Council. 12,000 of these so-called refugees, country shopping illegal immigrants, mooching off our welfare, taking up all our rental housing. Now it seems the corrupt council and Bendigo are at it again. Mayor Cox. Mayor Cox? Mayor Cox owns a local employment services uh, agency called Employment Opportunity or something like that which provides employment services for immigrants, refugees and, you know, hard done by people from other countries. It all makes sense now with the Bendigo Mosque fiasco. When the Muslim population in Bendigo is so damn small and they're building a mosque to fit over 2,000 people? Come on, we know what's going on now. This was planned all along. This is so much bigger than anyone ever knew. This had been pre-planned years ago, all right? But they tried to sneak it in quietly. But we're on top of it now, all right? We are on top of it. And Mayor Cox is getting a lot of this put in his pocket. Did you get that? They believe the Bendigo Council has approved the mosque because it's done a secret deal with the federal government to bring Muslim refugees to Australia so that they can take up our welfare and be put to work by a corrupt mayor at the same time. No, I'm not making that up. Ah, and did I mention that this refugee recruitment drive is a communist plot? And you got people like Sarah Hansen Young who stand up and say, we've got to let these people in because she's a fucking communist. Right. Moving on, the UPF claimed that Australian culture is under threat and only patriots like them are standing up to defend it. Australia does have a culture. And if you want to dispute that fact, I will ask you, did you wake up in a house with a pitched roof, a tiled roof, or a colour bond roof? Do you eat your meals with a knife and fork? Do you drive an automobile? Do you do your shopping at a local market, supermarket? Do you use a postal service? Do the garbage men collect your rubbish once a week? Have you ever received state welfare benefits? Congratulations. You are living in Australian culture. Well, now that we know that the UPF's mission is to defend Australia's knives and forks from Muslims, is there anybody else that they're worried about? Last year, Mr Erickson pled guilty in the Melbourne Magistrates Court to stalking after he abused a Melbourne rabbi in a series of anti-Semitic phone calls. Now, the UPF says it's made concerted efforts to distance itself from Nazis. We kicked a fucking Nazi out. But that doesn't really hold mustard when a convicted anti-Semite is a group administrator. And then there's this. The art of this game is to claim as many pieces as possible from your opponents. That is the ostensible art. However, it is also effective to demoralise your enemy, psychologically. The best way to do this is to first build them up, so that you can bring them down. Make your enemy believe that they are more intelligent than you. Mission accomplished. What are we to make of all this behaviour? The simple fact of the matter is that these guys, they don't know what they're talking about. Look, I've been living in the Middle East for over two years. Next to tens of millions more Muslims than live anywhere near Mr Erickson, or is toaster aisle, and if they were 5% as bad as the UPF make them out to be, I'd be dead by now. And by the way, no one has ever asked me or my beard what mosque we pray at. In fact, the only believable part of that story is this bit. I fucking shit myself. I believe that bit. That, that, that bit sounds plausible. And believe this. Counter to what you see in the media, the data suggests Muslim countries are less violent 
the non-Muslim ones. Closer to home, it's only today that we're coming to terms with the reality that domestic violence is our real problem. You'll also find mainstream Australian politics is sprinkled with the kind of racist, anti-Islam, anti-immigration and anti-intellectual values that drive the UPF. However, it's important to remember that the UPF are a fringe group, and far from getting most of their ideas from our politicians and media, they do a lot of the work themselves. You see, I do not watch television. I do not watch movies. I do not read ridiculous magazines, at least not much because I know I cannot possibly do so without consuming something subconsciously that is going to be harmful to my mind or my heart. You must be vigilant, very careful. The devil is in the detail. Look, what that kid did in Sydney was seriously fucked up. Yeah, I, ca I can't imagine what the victim's family, friends and colleagues are going through right now. But what the UPF is pushing in the wake of that is not the answer. 